The analog computer that is shown here is effectively computing the natural logarithm of the ratio of the voltage V2 over V1. Uh, and with a scale factor R1 over R2, where R2 and R1 are these two resistors. It's a very interesting computer in terms of logarithmic amplification. And uh, the way to find why and how this works, let's make the assumption that op amp 1 and 2 are both properly biased with the supply positive and negative voltages applied and uh, they are in linear region. Therefore, virtual short is valid for both op amp. And as a result of virtual short, given that negative uh, feedback is operational here, we can say that the voltage at positive input terminal of the op amp is the same as voltage at negative input. As you can see, voltage at positive input is zero. And as long as system is in linear operation, therefore voltage at negative is zero. What's the benefit of that? Well, it means that because V1 is here, therefore we have plus minus V1 across this resistor. And also we have plus minus V2 across this resistor. So therefore we can find the current I2 that is flowing and going toward transistor like this, and the current I1 that is flowing and also going toward transistors. This current cannot go to the input terminal of ideal op amp because input terminal of op amp has infinite impedance. So as a result, I can say I2 is simply V2 over R2 and I can say I1 is equal to V1, which is across R1, divided by R1, as you can see. So that's, that's how we find these currents. Now, each of these currents are flowing as the collector current for these bipolar transistors or BJTs. Uh, we make the assumption that beta for the transistors are pretty large, so I'm going to write it here. Beta is much, much larger than 1. Therefore, I of collector is equal to the I of emitter of the transistor. So therefore, if I2 is coming to, as, a corrector, as a collector current, I2 is also going out as emitter current. The same thing about I1. So I1 also is going out here. As a result, the sum of these two currents, I1 and I2, appear here and passing through resistor R, which I'm going to show it here. <coughs> so I1 plus I2 going toward the output of op-amp number 2. Now, uh, we can write the relationship between the base emitter voltage, so BE1, I'm going to write it here, so VBE1, okay, so I'm going to write it VBE1, and uh, the polarity is plus minus, and also I'm going to write, let me just remove I2 here so that we have enough space, plus minus VBE2 uh, here. Okay, uh, if I'm interested in finding V out here, I need to find, I need to find this voltage. Uh, and that is exactly the voltage of the base of transistor number uh, 2. So let me find VB2. And to find VB2, I can simply say, as you can see, a KVL between VB2 and uh, this ground here is simply VBE2 minus VBE1. So VBE2 minus VBE1. Now, we know that the, for the BJT operational linear region, VB of the transistor is related to current of the transistor this way. So we have, let me write it here. So we have I of the transistor. In this case, let's say for transistor number two, I can say I2 is the saturation current and E to the voltage of uh, base emitter number two divided by VT or V threshold. So, uh, and then, as a result of that, I can just write it in this way. So, effectively, VBE2 is equal to V threshold, and then ln of I2 over IS. Okay, so that's for transistor number 2. I can write the same thing for uh, the VBE1 as well, which means is V threshold ln I1 divided by IS. Okay, so um, if I'm interested in, let's say, finding the uh, VB2, I just need to uh, substitute these outcomes. So I'm going to write this as equation number 1. This is equation 2. This is equation 3. So 1, substituting equation 2 and 3 for VB2 and VB1, give me VB2 equal to, um, and then I have, I can factor out V threshold, and then I have the subtraction of this guy, uh, and this guy. So as a result, I have ln 
I2 over IS minus ln I1 over IS, which effectively becomes I2 over IS divided by I1 over IS, and IS cancel out. So effectively, I have just V threshold and natural logarithm I2 over I1. Okay, so what I can do is now I can use the result that I obtained earlier. So let's say equation star. I can use that and uh, from there, so I'm going to use, uh, let's, na let's name this equation 4. So I'm going to use equation 4 and I'm going to write combination of equation 4 and star so star meaning this equation, I can just substitute for I2, I1 in equation 4 and say V base 2 is equal to V threshold ln and I2 is simply V2 over R1, V2 over R2 and I1 in denominator is simply V1 over R1. So therefore uh, I get that VB2 is equal to V threshold ln and then uh, V2 over V1 times R1 over R2. Okay, so as the last step, uh, I just need to find how V out is related to VB2. So as you can see, I can say that there's a voltage division between V out and VB2. So I can say VB2 is simply R4 over R3 plus R4 times um, V out. And therefore, V out is simply R3 plus R4 divided by R4 VB2, which means is 1 plus um, R3 over R4 times VB2. So let's name this as equation number Let's name this as equation number. Uh, we can we can refer to this, or, or let's do it this way. From these two equations, by just uh, using by just substituting for B, VB2 this value, we can just say V out is equal to one plus R3 over R4 times V threshold. Now I'm substituting for VB2 using what I found on uh, in this line. So V threshold ln V2 over V1 times R1 over R2. And uh, that's exactly what we were trying to find, which is the final outcome of interest. Uh, so this shows that how a simple combination of two properly biased uh, ideal op amps and two VJTs or bipolar transistors can compute the natural logarithm of the ratio of the two voltages and then with a proper scale I can we can actually find that value as the output of this circuit indicated by V out. So V out effectively this is the result of analog computation of the logarithm for you. In practice people try to, to uh, counteract the thermal extreme thermal dependency of this computation because V threshold is very thermal sensitive, thermally sensitive, then people, uh, one, one practice is we select, uh, we can select R3 much larger than R4 uh, so that in this uh, 1 plus R3 over R4, it effectively become R3 over R4. And then the one, one good practice is for a smaller resistor R4 uh, it's possible to select it as a thermo, as a thermally adjustable resistor in which the value of it can thermally correlate with the V threshold so that when V threshold because of thermal impact is increasing, R4 is also increasing and therefore V threshold over, let's say, V threshold over R4 counteract each other and therefore the thermal dependency of this analog computer uh, reduces. So I hope that this is helpful.